Well, hello, Lord Marshall, family, and friends. Game five here at Quarantine Hammer. Uh, we have Nate Martin with his Imper Imperium, aka Iron Hands list. And we have um, not Cullen Burns, but uh, Scott over here with another Imperium list. I need to update that on the scoreboard. I'll do that here in a second. Uh, Wes is the TO and Judge here at the table. Guys in the game, say hi. What's up, people? Hello, Hello everyone. Nick. Cool. Awesome. And then joined us today... Uh, are the amazing shoutcasters we have? We have Bam from the Flying Monkey Podcast. What is crack a lacking, people? And Dino from this little place called Texas. First time, first time. <laughs> also, also on the Flying Monkey Podcast. He is. He is. Dino is a good guy. Decent. Don't don't let that get out though. That I have a heart. Accurate, accurate. <laughs> okay, cool. Well, we'll dig into the list for a few minutes while the, uh, it looks like the uh, guys are still deploying real quick. So, uh, Brian, what list did you want to review? Uh, in the chat already, Red Comet. What is up, Red Comet? Uh, let, me do, uh, let me do a uh, Scott Thompson's net list. <laughs> okay, sounds good. And where can we check out these lists? You can go to www.lordmarshall.org and all the quarantine hammers are on there. Uh, all the lists, myself included. Um, I made it into the Elite Eight. Uh, so if you want to go review and see what everybody's got, it's a whole hodgepodge of gimmicks. Uh, it was supposed to be exhibition friendly. Uh, some people bought some, uh, some, some stank. So we'll see how it goes. Yeah, uh, up on the screen. <laughs> Go ahead. You should see uh, Scott Thompson's list uh, doing the right, uh, Imperium uh, Scott, thing. I am um, I'm going to assume this is a uh, Imperial Fist. Uh, I didn't see that noted anywhere on there. Um, so he's got two chapter masters. Um, one is that sweet eye of Hypnoth Relic. Uh, so yeah, definitely uh, Imperial Fist. Uh, I'm not your not your friend, buddy. Uh, Red Comet. Um, but, uh, I have hit myth is a good relic in the Imperial fist. It makes the chapter master act as a Lieutenant as well. So you stash him by the Thunderfire cannons and they're rerolling those sweet misses and those sweet ones to wound. And I'm not your buddy, pal. Um, Duncan, Dunkalicious in the chat, you little bitch. Uh, so then he's also got master of the forge. Uh, which uh, probably is going on the Tech Marine to allow them heal a flat three damage. Um, troops, uh, typical intercessor, intercessor, intercessor. Keep scrolling, Jason. Sorry. And then we get down to the elites. Uh, rocking three Invictor Tactical Warsuits, which we know deploy midfield get out there and then uh three relic whirlwind scorpiuses uh i doubt that they're legitimate forge world but they're in the list <laughs> and then uh heavy support got the uh the brown noise dropping in uh a bunch of devastators with grab amps probably the cherubs allowing one to fire an extra time and then uh two other thunderfire cannons uh drop pod a uh, space el camino this is a pretty typical Imperial Fist list in this meta. I'd like to see how it goes. Uh, if Scott gets the jump, gets to go turn one, uh, Devastator Doctrine can be pretty damn brutal with these. Um, so uh, it's, a, it's a good list. It's uh, typically what you'd see out of Imperial Fist. And uh, Scott's a, a decent player, so he will probably do well with it. Word. All hell, if uh, don't even shout out his favorite pair of legs, Killzor must be Sean Dilly. If you've not seen that dude smash a Captain Morgan pose in the middle of a GT in his shorty shorts, you are not living a life. I'm excited to live that life. And for the kids listening at home, I am drinking a nice double barrel Woodford Reserve. Uh, what are you drinking, Dino? 
I am uh, drinking martinis tonight, sir. Trying to keep it classy for the for the show. Yeah, I guess you're about that life. All right, Dino, roll through Nate's list, man, and tell Nate to scroll when you get or uh, Jason to scroll when you get there. Uh, Jason can figure it out. I got it up on my own screen. So those of you looking for the list, I will put it in the chat again for you guys if you want to follow along. So Nate, who can only win with Iron Hands, I'm excited to see him actually try to do something post the the nerf for Doctrines. So he's coming out with two lieutenants, one, two, three, four infiltrator squads, which I'm actually a big fan of uh, that I'm building right now for my army. He's got two uh, Invictor War suits. They're going to be rocking the cannon, a fist, and of course the little sidearm, and then two Thunderfire cannons. So his Devastator Doctrine is going to be the same with that Relic Scorpius that he's hiding there in his elite section. What I'm actually really excited to see in his list, if we can go ahead and scroll down, Jason, is this Blood Angels attachment that he's been talking about a lot. Like, everyone's been a fan of the Smash Captain since the Smash Captains uh, came onto the scene with the new edition. But with the three scouts and those four infiltrator units, like I think he's going, he's going to have a lot of board control if he's if he gets to set up first. And that Death Company we saw the other night uh, on stream can be devastating if they get where they need to go and you actually spend the two CP that you need in order to have them swing again or pile into things to stop fighting. That's calling you out, Duncan, for screwing that up. Um, <laughs> other than that, man, I think it's. It's a game if, uh, no, I, I think it's a go first situation here, man. Like pending how dice turn out. Like if if Scott goes first and rolls cold, uh, I think Nate can get on top of him. But if Nate goes first and gets into all that, all those Scott, did you hear artillery that? pieces, man, he's just going to shut him down. Yeah, it looks like Nate uh, is the attacker and will go first unless Scott seizes, so. There shouldn't be a C's if we're playing the new sure. rules, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Man, that tells you how little the last time Jason played some real 40k was. It's been a long time. See, so this ends up being one of those situations where not having the C's roll could mean a lot. It's like you didn't have to set up for it or prepare like right, Nate's like, I'm going first. Okay, I'm just going to throw my death company out here right on the line and I'm coming at you. <laughs> yeah, and you look at like, you know, uh, uh, pretty much you get to plan however you want to. There's no element of surprise. Uh, I know a lot of people wanted that seize roll gone. I particularly was a fan of it because I think it kept people from Leroy Jenkins off the line. I think the one thing that would have been nice to see in Nate's list, but I know he was probably scrounging for points, was to get a spellcaster in there in order to do wings on that death company. It, uh, can they even be wings, Bam? Yeah, death company, uh, as long as you're on the board and you have a jump pack, uh, you can be wings. They're going to go 13 inches. But he doesn't need a, he doesn't need a caster for that. He can just do that with the strat. Oopsie, I fucked that up. So he's going to get his additional movement pre-game here after deployment, right? And then he's going to go into his normal movement phase, correct? I'm trying, man. Well, uh, looks like uh, Nate is going second. So he's taking that risk if he does. But he should be able to furlough, furlough Fury uh, pre-game and then uh, just take his movement from there once the game starts. But it looks like uh, Scott's going first, so... Not sure why I'd uh, want to throw all the death right, company out there and, and furlong. All right, now we're oh, Scott Scott was definitely deploying second. Was he? Okay. Yeah. Well, if Nate's going first, then it's pretty safe to throw those things up there. And uh, it looks like that's what he was doing then was his furlong fury move. Yep. I and apologize. There's that one move we were looking for. Yep, right there. I would put him on, oh, you get the minus two with that crater. He's neg two. Yeah, he needs to avoid that crater. I don't know. I think I think it, even with the minus two, I think if you set up that squad on that crater, that way you get some cover saves in that Overwatch, depending what what that model is right in front. Well, but uh, Death Company, you can also take a three D six charge with them. So yeah, yeah, so you're not that minus two isn't going to do anything. To Holy them. crap! We just saw another Invictor. All right, that's not an Invictor. That's a yeah, it is. Just yep. move yeah, right on the door. If you look at what Scott did in his deployment, 
Uh, if we can zoom in over there, Jason. Yeah. Oh, just, yeah. uh, here, Scott here, actually did do, you know, you can employ those invictors in uh, No Man's Land, uh, but it was pretty smart of him to put those invictors back there to screen. Yeah, they're not shabby in close combat. They got a negative three weapon, uh, flat three damage. So once you get through some scrub intercessor units, uh, there's a pretty good counterpunch sitting right behind them in those tactical war suits. So uh, Nate does have to play this pretty pretty tricky and uh, i think throwing that impulsor out there in front of the screen as well was a, a pretty sharp move on scott's part does that shield dome still take effect in close combat it's a little yeah that model just has a four up and vulnerable save and uh dunkalicious in the chat um brings up a good point i forgot uh you only you only get the 3d6 charge if you drop in uh, so I think, you know, I don't know. Nate should take it a little bit more care to not be on that Didn't crater, in my opinion. There, so for folks at home, if they're listening, uh, I don't see... See, I like, I like Scott's deployment here where he's got the three Scorpius tanks right back there in the corner. He did a very good job screening out no one having Nate going first. Yeah, yeah, what do you think is... Uh, quick question for you guys. Uh, what do you think is the most important unit in Scott's army right now? I don't see shit. I don't know if he has like a most important unit. Uh, there's a lot of redundancy, and uh, I think in most good lists you have to have some redundancy. Hey Jason, can we go ahead and go to the scorecard so we can see what secondaries they picked? Sure. Yeah. It. I think. Well, this is really interesting, guys. Tabletop simulator first. We have a crater on top of Rhino. Oh, oh, the crater just moved. Whoa! And models are flinging off the board. Welcome to Tabletop Simulator. Okay, we'll look at the objectives right now. All right, Brian, can you look at? Can you talk about Nate Dogs um, or Nate's objectives? Photo proof. I didn't know. All right, uh, Nate, buy his 9.99 ebook on the on the Amazon. Martin has a big game hunter. Recon and marked for death. I'm not sure what he marked for death, uh, but Big Game Hunter's pretty smart. Uh, he should between, you know, two Invictus is pretty much uh, two and a half big game points. There's three of them sitting on the board. All the Scorpiuses count towards it. So uh, that's a pretty safe bet as far as secondaries go. Uh, recon, uh, with this deployment, Recon is pretty easy to get. Uh, so that was, uh, you know, he's got to weather the storm of the fire, though, to be able to hold that and Mark for Death. Uh, we'll have to see what he did for Mark for Death. I'm not sure on the units. We'll have to ask when we get a chance. Cool. And Dino, can you talk about uh, Scott's? So they're pretty much going to trade off Big Game Hunter and Recon, depending how this game goes. I think the that play of Butcher's Bill is an interesting one. Um, if those if those Scorpius tanks go down, uh, I don't think there's a way for him to continue getting them. But we already talked about his screen job. Those things are probably gonna be up for a little while. So his death company is gonna go in, hopefully kill that Impulsor. And I hope that he piles into those Invictor war suits and just take the couple punches in the face that he's gonna get from them. Yeah, he pretty much has to destroy that Impulsor. Uh, if he does not destroy the Impulsor, uh, he's pretty much screwed. Because Impulsor has fly, so it can just fall back, get out of the way. Uh, and Victors can pretty much torch those Death Company because they're not rocking any kind of an invulnerable. Looks like Nate is moving uh, two Smash Captains up the board. I'm pretty sure Nate has his recon. I'm not sure where the death company are, but uh, it looks like he's already scored his recon in the movement. Yeah, he's 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 gonna have recon just because of the infiltrators and the scouts. Man, it's so weird that this this list just moves so quickly. I feel like it's because of the invictors, and you can deploy them outside your deployment zone. I think if you are a Space Marine player and you do not have at least two Invictors in your list, you are wrong. Uh, I guess Wes is gonna help me. Really? Um, Why is that? I thought, I, thought, I thought you could only use the stratagem on one of them at a time. What, what stratagem do you speak of? Aw, oh, man, I don't know which one it was. It was on me. I'll look at my codex and get back with you. So here's my theory on Invictor as far as gameplay. And if you look, Nate's kind of doing the same thing. It's, uh, it's threat overload or it, it accelerates your threat overload because they can deploy 
nine inches off your deployment line and then they have a 10 inch movement so they can be within your deployment zone uh turn one if that person goes first and they're not something to be ignored you know they're almost better than a regular dreadnought in the fact that they shoot a little bit and they're good in close combat so if you don't deal with them they're going to start wrecking your stuff pretty quickly and uh, that's pretty much how most Space Marine players will play them. If they get to go turn one, you're just going to see them in your face turn one, and you have to deal with them or else you're going to have a lot of troubles in your lines. See, I'm thinking of my buddy's Imperial Fist list out here in Dallas. Um, he's running one Redemptor class Dreadnought in his yeah, uh, Fist list. That's a completely different animal. Yep, so two wins. But I'll... I'm I'm not sure about this list anymore with the Relic Scorpius tanks and the two Thunderfire cannon or two to three Thunderfire cannons. It's uh you know here's the thing it's not uh, Devastator Doctrine was being forced to change in the, in the doctrines now. It's definitely going to be different. Um, if if he if he doesn't do a significant amount of damage uh, this first turn, his 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 capacity to damage Nate's army is just going to be severely hindered from what this list used to do before the surprise FAQ that we got. So, um, no. Red Comet made a funny chat comment and said, uh, are war suits as much pressure as my wife's expectations? I would say, depending on how high maintenance your wife is, the answer is no. <laughs> hey, quick question for you guys, uh, Dino and Brian. As you see, Scott's army is deployed right here. Uh, so I'm pretty sure they had the uh, corner deployment. You know, the little the circle. It's a pretty bad drawing. Just bear with me. You know, why did he not screen any of the units better? Maybe put the infantry out more. Um, you know, I feel like this is a misplay right from the get go of Scott deploying incorrectly. What are your thoughts? You go first, Bam. I don't I don't think it's a problem because he can you know he's not stuck or committed if you look these three war suits that he's got in his backfield move 10 inches if he would have spread them out they could not react where the problem happens you know Nate could have attacked off of one side or moved off of the other um, I don't think it's a horrible move uh, I deployed if you look at my deployment last night against Delang you know I castled everything up but I'm playing space wolves I just think sometimes in reaction to what the other player is doing, it's not a bad idea to have some stuff centered so you can react and move out. Impulse. Actually, we're gonna do. Uh, we'll go after the intercessors. With Dino, thoughts? I don't know. I'm looking at it right now. I I, I probably would have taken those intercessors and pushed them out just a little bit. Like, actually, I guess I'm just I'm gonna put the heavy bolter in the impulsor. Everything else is going. But I I can concede that point on the intercessors. Uh, they're really meaningless. They're 85 points. I think you could seven inches out and been just fine. I agree with you on that. Deal. I think the one thing that would have happened though is that that Invictus suit would have been able to make that charge in. So once again, man, Scott's deployment is risky, but I think it's good for right now. Like if those Death Company don't do what they're supposed to do to. Uh, that impulsor, then he's going to be on top of Nate. I also think of something we're not considering here is if he sticks those intercessors out in the wind or he sticks a unit out in the wind, uh, it gives the opportunity for that death company to wrap it and not kill it. He can also just punch it with his fist instead of swinging the thunder hammers, instead of swinging the chain swords and keep it wrapped in close combat for a turn. So it's not shot at as well. Right. And just to point out that this rhino is actually an impulsor. It's a modeled impulsor. If you look at it. Oh, sorry. It, it doesn't have the El Camino. Right. But it, but it does have the hover skids. It's close enough. <laughs> what are we doing here? What are we shooting? Take it. Take it. Well, let's tune in the players real quick. We got the. Ooh. Hey, Duncan, I was talking about uh, wrapping up the intercessors. I wasn't talking about wrapping up the impulsor, you yep. fool. I uh, need a four. Nothing. And we got the. Um, 
grenade launcher, number of shots, four shots. So is this the uh, impulsor firing in? Need threes. I believe he's firing the. Oh, not the impulsor. Uh, the Nicholas war suit. Yeah, it's the war suit firing with the grenade launcher on. Looks like one. One at uh, was it? I don't think it's. Is it any negative? I don't even think so. No, because it's not tactical. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. So what's the sorry. benefit of having this uh, okay. war suit in the Iron Hands? So you got uh, three bros and that unit left. Okay. Um, Six up, fill no pain, I believe. All right. Uh, well, all right. We'll do uh, one of the thunderfire cannons. And that cannon's also a heavy weapon too, right? Right, and so turn one when they're in dev doctrine, he can move and fire with no abilities. Yeah, I'll go ahead and spend one CP to fire it twice, the one that can reach, uh, since I've got two things in range here. With the... It's going to fire its first shots at the intercessors. We brought a Necron player on to talk about space marine stuff. It's uh, going to be an interesting night. One CP to shoot twice. I mean, uh, that was the whole goal, make you uncomfortable. Two CP to, to make them so they can't move. Yeah, but I, I think uh, Nate is running a custom chapter, though. So one, one CP I don't know what you see, Dino says Iron Hands. I think he's I think doing like the, I think the own preacher own chapter gimmick for that for time. Time. Yeah. Okay, so shoot two CP. Two CP. two CP to shoot twice. So here's a number of shots. I do believe Nate has custom chapters in his ebook. Uh hopefully he made a post FAQ's uh update to it, uh Homestorm. <laughs> Yeah, he did. He, so he's like successors. He's got Master Artisan and Stealthy. Oh. And need threes. Ugh. These were into who? But because of the mix, he's not getting the Super Doctrine, correct? Uh, one third fire candidate into the intercessors. Hang on. That yeah. would be correct. That's fine. I got one more Master Artisans right here. And then th Hold there's up. one more. Yeah, this one. I'm, I'm excited to talk with Nate after the game to find out why he put both Smash Captains on the board to start. Yeah, they failed all four. Okay. He is also learning a new list. I think the the blood his second shot he'll go ahead and burn in addition to Neymar's list. Uh, he was running pure Iron Hands, and uh, just after this last FAQ, so. We will see how he plays with them. Thank you. Thank you. Right. So got any comments Easy about that teams. game last night, fam? You know, I went back and watched the stream today. And uh, I have a feeling that whoever was shout casting last night had no freaking clue what I was doing on the tabletop. Now be nice. A including things about, you know, if this happens, uh, this is that's the game for Bam. You know, I don't know how Bam's going to get out of this. So we went into turn five, 23 Mike, 20 Bam. And we wound up walking out of that game, 33 Bam, 24 Mike. And uh, I felt like Hannibal on the 18. I love it when a plan comes together. All righty. Guess he's gonna shoot his shot. In all fairness, that's kind of our uh, job to take uh, educated shots. guesses. Like for example, uh, Duncan's uh, Duncan's in Cullen's game guesses. the other day. Uh, you know, Duncan brought in the uh, blood or the uh, excuse me, the Death Company in, and totally wrecked Cullen's list. And for about five or six turns, or about at least four turns, we knew that it was gonna be Duncan's game. But Cullen played a really good game, and it was uh, Duncan's to lose. And that's kind of what happened, so. Yeah, uh, Duncan's game and my game were two completely different animals. I had a plan from the start. I chose to go second, and they balked at me going second because I wanted more, more control of how the, the board was scored. And I also knew that white scars were going to be in my face pretty quick, and space wolves are great on the counter punch. I put some bait units out there for him to chase down on weird sides of the board. They didn't understand what a bait unit was doing. And uh, I sprung three or four different traps so, that uh, they thought was stupid up, play, up but the traps went off. Uh, and uh, I wound up killing all of his models uh, before we left that game. Is one gun's gonna be out of range. That was a table and a five, correct? 
So I think yeah. table five. Uh, uh, and uh, only 18, right? you know, from being 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 having that game called so and, and saying I'm not going to get out of that deficit, it's so kind of fun. Nipple guns. And hey, you know what? But that's uh, sometimes that's 40k right there in a nutshell, right? Well, see, you said educated guess. Those were uh, uneducated guesses. Now, everybody starts from somewhere. <laughs> Jason is here defending the, uh, the the defended, so it's kind of funny. I think it's his job as uh, host and moderator, or whatever else you want to call it, the Lord Marshall Conference. He's trying to keep it together. You guys are a bunch of animals always trying to attack each other. All right. This is a uh, he's got yeah, he, John Madden he's, in here he's, trying he's to attack right. Joe Buck right. and he's trying to play mediator. Castle Castle. Uh, I think that is everything else. 24. Oh, does Duncan have guys. uh PTSD from screwing up his point. game? That's uh, that's impressive. Yeah, I, Duncan, I uh, Duncan's got a good good habit of either tying or, or losing okay. the games in late turns. Okay. So I got uh, what? Yeah, if he's not busy tomorrow, maybe I'll hit him up. For my first game of uh, T TTS, and see the impulsor? work with him. See what my Necrobs can do against that Blood Angels army he's rocking. Yeah, guy... you got three. Yeah, he's kind of a so two pump so... chump. You know, he's always making fun of the old guys, but you know, there's there's that saying of the young bull and the old bull, where the young bull and the old bull are standing on the hill, and the young bull looks over at the old bull mm. and he says, "Hey man, let's run down there and screw one of them cows." Well, the old bull looks at the young bull and says, "Hey man." Let's walk down there and screw all the cows. Duncan hasn't learned that in life yet, so that's why he loses games late turns. All right, good job. Uh, I think that is all she wrote for my shooting. You you gonna let him do that to you, Duncan? Oh, here we go. He's coming back now with something. All right, what do we got here? What do we got? What do we got? We got one dude here, and we got these guys. Man, he's calling you a spectrum boy. Maybe I should, maybe I should call up my acquisition, man. Yeah, I don't I don't know if he knows who he's talking to. I'm I'm not sure his let's, wife has allowed him on the computer um, tonight. Maybe uh, that's her typing on his stick. So Ooh, let's like, get to the dice rolls here, Jason. Let's seven, go ahead and no, see no, these no, charges. Five, right? Yep, it is the it's charge seven, phase. Seven, okay, seven, this seven, is seven, this is where Nate Dog seven, needs to shine. Seven, eight, 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 let's let's tune into Nate real quick and see see what he's able to pull out. This guy, Yeah. All right. All right, here we go. Uh, we're going to do the tactical war suits going after the Impulsor first. All right, let me throw some storm bolters at you. Yeah. Do it. Storm. Boom, two hits because Imperial Fist. Mm -hmm. Oops, sorry. So I agree with this move of having that war suit come in first. Nothing. Okay. Absolutely. Uh, what do we yeah, agree it's it was? Probably better what for I mean? it to eat a lot of the Overwatch it's instead of that red coming, four, which is so rather so fragile. So they are a seven. glass hammer. Seven. All right. There we go. The issue is going to be oh, that crater. Yeah, it needs uh, a six. Yeah, you rolled a five. I'm going to spend a CP. Let me roll this bad boy. He needs to re-roll it. Come on, come on. There we there go. There it is. Got an eight. Eight inches. This next there we go. Really, I'm going four inches. Go. Just eight. enough to get you to that guy. Where's that Leroy yeah. Jenkins noise, Jason? Um, yeah, it's there. We have, have uh, every time you follow charge, the channel, so we got go. a They're going at the, um, nice impulsor. Leroy Jenkins sound. Oh, for a charge. Well. And that's because uh, I haven't set up the uh, sound files for that yet. Oh, so maybe in the future. Uh, it's pretty lame. Bam, our boy here. I didn't like where he put that dread. Okay. All right, Wes, you want to bring my thunder hammers up close to the bad boy? I think I uh, should all be in front. I don't know. Was he out of wheels? Uh, I think he should have went further in. Appreciate it, guys. Yeah, he had six inches of movement. He only moved four because he's coming out of that crater. Only moving six. I think he should have went to the end of that impulsor on the passenger side. We're only moving six. Uh, so at least when uh, hopefully that impulsor is destroyed, really, he can yeah, pile so in I'm just, I'm just, to the, uh, yeah, get the intercessor the, over there at the slightest. I'm just saying move the. Yeah. The that was, for, that was for my purposes. Yeah, yeah. 
loving the telescope. Oh, correct. Sir. Hey, and actually, uh, I got to give Dunkalish some props here. He just pointed out something that I did last night in my game. Um, I combined, I was moving the impulsor through a crater because uh, the impulsor is negative two to charge and the crater is negative two to charge for a combined negative four charge. So he was Ooh. definitely out of wheel. I didn't know that. Props, Duncan. I uh, I forgot about that, and I did that last night. Tells you how short sighted I am. Okay. Uh, now, despite all the trash that I talked on the show the other night, like I, so I am excited to get into the, TTS this week uh, and uh, play around with first. the custodes and submarines list that I have. Yeah, TTS is a really yeah, great way to uh, kind of test armies that you're planning on getting into. Maybe buy those 300 crew. Master artisans. I think when uh, everybody is allowed out of the house and, and the uh, quarantine is uh, over, uh, you're going to see a lot of people use this as a testing ground before they buy models. And that's kind of where I'm at with it because I, I think it's a good option when you don't have 40k. But it, it is not uh, is not my preferred method of play. Right, I got to, but I do uh, think it's a good way to dojo new list and dojo new units and no, see how they perform no, no. on the tabletop before you buy. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He, yeah. He should he should have one left. I agree. That's right, like what I said on uh, Wednesday. Uh, okay. I get a so chance to play you, Ben, and the other guys on the show once I start figuring out how this yeah. thing works. Yeah, and that's the cool thing too. Like uh, Ben lives in Minnesota. I live oh, in Kansas. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, Ben is a okay. uh, top level GT yeah. winner. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. it gives me the opportunity to get some games against him, who is uh, above my level, and uh, hopefully get good by playing better people and uh, having the opportunity to do them when I've been limited by geography and before. One guy dies coming out. And if you want to, you Man, should go this. into uh, iTunes. Or Spotify, and listen to the Flying Monkeys Wargaming podcast. Uh, every Wednesday we have drop an episode. Uh, Dino's been a late addition to it. Uh, Dunkalicious is in there in the chat as one of the founders, one of my homeboys. Uh, every week we put an episode out: rain, snow, hail, high water, black plague, whatever. We're doing the thing. So tune in, and listen. We'll have something to tell you. Uh, this is weird. They're adding uh, models back. Can we get me, uh yeah let me let me line? check on that real quick uh with the players hey wes uh just wanted to check on why we were adding play or uh models oh models were getting out of the impulsor okay thank you guys come on jesus i, bet I just haven't the removed the uh impulsor apparently the apparently the squad the, uh, the squad was not marked correctly so we couldn't tell what was going on nothing's marked is we got a mouse in your pocket. Come on. So we can go ahead and assume that Death Company does what Death Company does and jack up that impulsor. Here's an interesting thing. That Death Company is, well, it might consolidate. I mean, to be fair, they do I don't know. That's a really long three inches right there. You you go ahead and spend the hey, spend the CP the to move them so to get <laughs> just just touch those guys that just fell out of that impulsor because they, they, right. they have no they have That's really nowhere to move because of that wall and everything and this is exactly what he needs to do that we talked about earlier was he needed to get as far back as possible to try to lock stuff in so then everything as you're looking at the board will have to start moving out left around that hill in order to stay away from the death company. But his war suit also still gets to do his uh, pile in and consolidate move because he charged the space. And then will uh, will the Invictor be able to attack the intercessor that just piled out? Negative. Yeah, because they weren't because they weren't on the board, so they weren't they weren't able to be declared. Right. Toward the nearest, I guess. How's a little 4K knowledge for you guys out there? Do you want them to get into combat or not? Yeah, yes. See, this is one thing that gets weird now is when you have to pick up, when you're picking up that whole unit, this is something where, like, he really needs to start moving That's each the, individual. That was the goal for the war suit. And you could do that in the game, correct? Right. As long as you just don't, it's like an RTS. You don't have to select all of them. Do you want to go another three and 
Yeah, you can move them individually. It just takes a lot well. of fucking time, and these games yes. are slow anyway. That's the intention. Yeah, but it looks like they're actually using a chess clock, or is that just a feature of this map? Nope. We are using a chess clock. You're welcome, everybody. That was a one and yep. move. Yesterday's game took a long time. Thank you. Whatever. You guys shifted rules halfway through it. I want the one rolling buckets of dice. Well, just took a long time. Thank you. Go ahead and give us an over top angle if you don't mind, Jason. Sure. Yeah, so move the war suit first. So he's. He, he's so I heard you were going to add a water cup or water bottle feature to the game. That way we can nudge models. Yeah, no, only you're if good. you're playing town. No, no, you're good, man. You're good. You're good. I just want to make sure we're all straight. Okay. All the attacks uh, are going to the death company. I don't give a fuck about the war suit. I mean, yeah. yeah so I, heard I, from, I heard from some top Go level players the, the worst thing about this is uh, hard to move your opponent's models on a, on their phase. Yeah. You want to get me uh, three times four and then five. What'd you have for me, Dino? Send it. So, how many games have you gotten in so far since the quarantine on, on this system? I'm probably on my, counting last night, my seventh game. Man, you love you some 40k, dude. I, uh, I am a retired cop with nothing better to do at the end of the day with grown kids. All right, so now we're getting into the movement phase for Scott, correct? Oh, man. Hey, nope. just for my ease. Those intercessors there. should get a swing at those. Uh, yep. Yeah, I mean, oh, all we're, 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 on him. We're, in, we're in his combat. Copy. He's like, whoa, what is happening? I'm confused. Can we get. I mean, they're space marines. We all know what they get wounded on. So no, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, no, 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 no. I just, it was confusing at first. I Red see, comment I, in the chat said, right. by the way, on my hey, side, all though, I see is a little mouse. I'm there. assembly lining, but I got my dudes out of order. So now I don't remember what color that I'm doing sense. on what right. guy. Six that sense. sounds like a senior. Six moment. Six. Here we go. Uh, a Everett said they're drinking an Ooh, Albanian yeah. brandy tonight. Yeah, that sounds classy. Yeah, uh, I, probably I way classier hands. than I. But then Red comes in with his hardcore pumpkin spice liqueur. Uh, say two. You All would right. make two of those. Yeah, sense. I don't know if I'd admit I drank yeah, something like that publicly. Hey, when you're, you're basic, you're basic, sword. dude. Go bye bye. That that is some basic white girl shit right there. Okay. Uh, so scoring. Help me, Mr. To. Hey, you guys. Do you, I got a question what for you guys. You have, have the bonus. Uh, do you think Scott can move? I guess he can. He can totally move out of uh, combat with this Death Company squad. Maybe the angle was a little funny. I I don't know because if they still get, uh, it's gonna be tough. I believe, right? Yep, I should have recon. Yep. I think I think he has the movement that back in Victor suit moves left. This other one moves back just a little bit. You only need that one inch. That's what you tell all the ladies. Hey, one inch does it sometimes, man. He's dead. Just the tip. Speaking of just a tip, you can tune in to Flying Monkeys Warhammer Podcast, where we have uh, some top level guys on that give. Uh, That's my turn, sir. Techniques for playing Warhammer 40k every Wednesday. Okay. All right, that's Duncan's turn right there. They've just scored, or not Duncan? Duncan excuse me, Nate's turn. Nate's turn. Wow, I put Nate and Duncan in the same sentence. I'm sorry, buddy. Five two zero at the top. That's not a bad turn for Nate. Not at all. So with my awesome math hammer skills. This is, uh, Nate has a 63% chance to win right now. Look at that fancy graphic you got there. Yeah. Like you've done this before. Just a little bit. Uh, here comes the brown noise. Looks like them, uh, grab devs are dropping in to finish off the death company or the, Im the Invictor. So good. 
Didn't work though. The whole thing fucked up. How many shots are these guys pumping out, Bam? It's fine. I believe it's D3, and they have a strat where they're plus one wound and they can reroll wounds. Okay, Duncan said it's four per. Um, I personally haven't ran these guys because I play either Space Wolves or Blood Angels. And we what? have no access to the brown noise. So, question, why are people um, bringing Grav again? It's because of the Strat in the Space Rain book. There's a Strat in the Space Rain book that, like I said, it makes them uh, easier to wound. And uh, it's it's adds to their damage as well, so it's pretty nasty. Hey, sorry guys, I had to step away for a second. I got kid and uh, wife aggro, but I am back. <laughs> we added two And then uh, I believe also one something to consider on that is going to be Devastator Doctrine. Um, so it's uh, there's a whole lot of bonuses they get, but they're pretty much going to die after they shoot whatever they're going to shoot. Do you know how many points uh, Grav Squad is? Uh, it's probably 200 ish. Okay, so yeah, you definitely want to fire it into a squad like uh, this death company um, Actually, he did a really good job Scott did of placing this grab squad if you look There's no line of sight from this angle. So this and Victor doesn't have anything uh, The only thing you really has to worry about are smash captains But you don't want to send send smash captains into a grab squad personally. I think that would be a bad choice I disagree the thing yeah, you're not I, considering that uh that invictor still gets to move so if uh it's gonna be back there shooting those grab guys with a flamer uh it's titty stubbers and everything else and also those smash captains can go up to the wall and one or two inch charge without being overwatched and then go touch the drop pod and not get shot at oh yeah, yeah that's, that's what true I'm, that's what i'm saying too you go in even if you kill those guys in shooting you just send those smash captains in so that into that pod and you don't use their close combat weapon you go ahead and just headbutt them and the, on the basic stat profile so is there another place to put this drop pod and grab i think he dropped it the best place um i i think it might be a little bit greedy i would have probably let my thunderfire cannons do the work on that death company um it's kind of like uh you know he he didn't even get done making out with the chick and he shot his wad yeah, I agree. Maybe holding it off one turn. He still has a lot of resources. Only lost, uh, what, Intercessor, Intercessor Squad and... Uh, the tank? Yep, the tank. The one tank. I don't play the Space Marines a lot, guys. I think if he would have held that grab back another turn or two, uh, as Nate spread out, he could have taken a more juicy target in the backfield or something that was more clutch. Um you know, three Thunderfire Cannons and three Scorpiuses, those uh, Death Company Marines are not going to be world long for the world. He didn't need grab for that. Okay, there any... swing us... Oh, sorry, swing Daniel, us... go ahead. Yeah, swing us around into Nate's backfield, because we've been right here in Scott's corner this whole time. I kind of want to see where he set up his Thunderfire Cannons and his Scorpius tank. So well, that's where it is. See, and Scott could have done the game of, uh, I believe you can fire those Devastators again. And uh, I think he could have went at those uh, Thunderfire Cannons, unless he's got Infiltrators back there somewhere I don't know about. He could have found Nine Inches somewhere. Yeah, I think I think uh, Nate did a really good job of blocking out Scott from the backfield. Again, in the getting greedy and not thinking long term, you know, two or three turns of uh, whirlwinds with indirect fire and uh, thunderfire cannons. He's going to be able to open a pathway for them devs to come down where they're needed. Go back, go back to uh, the scorecard, please, Jason. I want to see his secondary options again. I don't remember them. Yep, there. I just put them on the screen. Yeah, I'm worried about that recon now for, for Scott with <laughs> dropping that drop pod right there. No, you're supposed to say... Yeah, that's a, that's a long haul to get uncastled for recon, so 
that I agree with Dino. That was probably a piss poor right, so secondary choice. Now. But uh, if uh, if he can weather the storm oh, oh, okay. and then spread out, you know, six turns is a long game. You can uh, you can get recon, not get into the first turn or two, and oh, okay. still max it out. Do you think the play here is to go ahead, like Death right. Company? They have a feel no pain, correct? Yep. Poor Death Company. They do. They get a six up feel no pain, and you, you can go also transhuman them. That's what I was saying, thinking like you go ahead and transhuman them and just make them start shooting as much stuff as possible that's in this little bubble into them, okay. keeping your backfield stuff alive. His, uh, big guns are going into the other Invictor. All right, here you go. Scott is shooting. Okay. Yeah, Killzor brings up a good point too. Big guns. Um, getting that yeah, double recon is to do now. Yeah, you could not do that before, but you can also get that double recon now. So it's not impossible to do. Okay. And I don't. I don't see a path for it uh, right threes. now. For this is well, the Victor. I think basically he has, he's gonna have to uh, deal with the Victors if they survive. Oh. So it's Snake Two, uh, gotcha, Strike Seven, Snake gotcha, Two, gotcha. Three Damage. Did not know you had the. Jason, you know if Scott has anything so else in Deep two? Strike, or was that it? That was it. So, yeah, it's basically gonna be up to the Invictors um, if they don't get. If they don't get the Hucklebuck off of uh, Nate's Nate's gimmicks, because of Devastator, yeah, yeah. And yeah. Duncan also said you can uh, okay. so you can transhuman uh, those Death Company, uh, and in addition to the transhuman, you can give them a five up, feel no pain. So it might be worth seeing how much they can tank and making I, Scott uh, deal with that threat because he has to deal with the Death Company. Yeah, I I think that's the the play you make here if you're Nate and folk force Scott to decide, do I just eat this death company coming in next turn and see what I do and remove stuff off of objectives? I don't think, I don't know if he can weather that storm. <laughs> There's a lot of thunder hammers in that death company. Oh, death okay. company. They don't give a shit. Death. <laughs> so if we hear guess. Nate talking, he's pretty excited because the death company is awesome. Hmm. What's Damn up, weirder chimp? Mm -hmm. Hey, everybody in the chat, check in. Tell us where you're from. Where you watching out of? Three wounds. Is there next? I wanted to hear what everyone's working on on their hobby table. That's what I'm more interested in. I don't care so where the fuck they live. One. Not that it matters. Uh, well, I gotta feel the pain. Everyone's in their house. Everyone's oh, quarantined. Burn. No one can go to any event right now. Not that it matters. <laughs> All right, next, uh, <laughs> next, and Victor's doing the exact same thing. Big gun into the suit, Victor. and then everything else into the death. The company. war room fair. hobbies. Fair, fair. It's not. It won't matter because I'm gonna blow my Victor up, and that's what's gonna kill a bunch of my death company. So don't worry about it. That's right. Sean is catching up on the game under my desk. Bane of Night in Lot in Oklahoma. Working on Roman stuff. Don't worry about that one that rolled in the background. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so just and two wounds. Two. Oops. War room hobbies. I own Wizards Asylum in Wichita. And about the only lifeblood so I got going damage. for me right now is my eBay store. I managed to pay my rent with my eBay listings this month, so I'm pretty happy for that. This will be the heavy bolter. Why is it rolling all those? That's I was like, honestly impressed hit, with how quick one, you sent stuff out when you were doing your little fire sale. Here's the thing. I'm lazy and I'm a procrastinator. So I just know if I do it right away, it'll get done. Three hits total. Mm -hmm. Plus you're my boy. I got to take care of you. Got some good stuff on that fire sale. So four, uh, three wounds. I believe Dino picked up some uh, some Take Eldar two. stuff. Yeah, I picked What's up, up uh, you Scott Horner stuff for my daughter. Nice. This was at the uh, war suit. No, no, this is like, like uh, Scott there. Horner checking in made, from uh, uh, cousin nine, Flucker Lane. Up saves. Oh yeah, and another the... six up. <laughs> Looks like so, Nate made Scott more Scott saves with the uh, Death Company, unfortunately. Uh, Intercessor's gonna shoot Mike at you Horner. I apologize. Still same region. Yep. 
I'm impressed. Hey, hey, Jason, can you go into their chat and ask if he actually did the the five up feel no pain and transhuman? Yeah, I, it looks like he is. So yeah, five hits because of the six that was there. Yeah, yeah, you're good. And four wounds, neg three. Two damage. Uh, two damage a piece. Oops. You want to just roll four and then yeah, if you hit here, six, roll another six? Here, Yeah, it's so it's four dudes. Here's the first dude. Second dude. Third dude. Fourth dude. Four dudes did. So, Dean, to answer your question, he did not pay for the yeah. five up in Or, excuse me, feel no pain. Thank you. Hmm. I'm wondering, wondering what he was thinking. I think transhuman right, for sure. Grab guys do you, do you not have an app in order to get into the players' myself. brains yet? Like so. you've done everything else with this screen. <laughs> um. Let's do the. No, not yet. So Bam and I just have to sit here and guess. Nate, Nate's fucking retarded, guys. I'm sorry. Accurate. Spend one CP to. Yeah. He's on the spectrum. He, he's been talking about orcs the last two weeks, and uh, we, we, we can't seem to get him in line anymore. He's he's out of control. Okay. Whoa, whoa! Thank you for bad internet. <laughs> so how much how much has he fired into him so far? Because I have their Scott game chat muted pissed. because I don't like the echo. Right. That's exactly what's happening. Uh, I think he's fired Which two in Victor's. <laughs> maybe three. All right, this is the into the. This guy hits on suit. threes. Yeah. Yep. More suit. Yep. Yep. You need fours, right? Grab. And now, yeah, right now, Grav are going oh, yeah, into fives. the Invictor. Is there a bonus damage that so four, Grav does four, against so no vehicles, save. or was that previous edition? He, let's see if he goes boom. Here we go. Does he go boom? I don't think so. Oh, my God. Yes. <laughs> I told you. I, told I stepped you. out of the room. Oh, he blew up. I mean, I'll take some intercessor wounds. You going to reroll that? F, F that. Yeah, let's just re-roll it. All right, spend me, spend my CP. Spend a CP, re-rolling this guy. Come on. There we go. All right, he's not going to die. All right, and Victor down. Oh, no. He is dead. I really wanted to see this thing blow up again. I don't know. All right, then you're going to roll the rest of your grav. The rest of your dudes, I mean. So is this the grab go rest of the grab going to the death company? Yep. I'm trying to find my space marine codex so I can at least pretend like I know what's going on. So let's do some real world talk. How's the hard things going the up there for you, right? Jason? Uh, it's good. Kiddos are home. Just this having fun. Me. Sorry, I was hitting the wrong button. Gonna be uh, oh, okay, okay, okay. opening up my uh, paint studio. My kids painting. <laughs> I think that'll be fun. Just kidding. I, I actually uh, had my kids take the Space Marine designer. They drew uh -huh. up their color schemes that they wanted. I'm going to build a couple uh, primaries this weekend, yeah. and I'm going to so let them go ahead and go to town. Death. Nice. Death. And then I'll roll. We also have our uh, Blackstone Fortress characters we have to paint up. We're going to start that game on Saturday night for family game night. That's pretty awesome. That's pretty awesome. Two more I miss Fifth painting guy. with my kids. <sighs> Almost. And then last dude. So six dudes dead. 
what I'm really excited about is my so son wants to learn how to box, so we're gonna work on the gym next week in the garage and set up a heavy bag and go, go to town. Nice. Did you used to box, do you know? Yeah, when I was younger. I was on a Fort Riley's team for a couple of years. See, that's the one that's the one thing that I hate about the Air Force is that they don't have an appreciation for pugilism like the other branches. I just like to do it because I didn't have to go to the motor the pool with everybody else. Within, uh, rapid fire this thing. I can't. Yes. Man, he's taking a big chunk out yeah, in death yeah. count me. I think Nate's going to lose it. Yeah, I'm wondering if if the if that five Two plus wins, funeral pain is going to come back wins. against him on Three there. Wins. Like if it would have been worth it. So how many CP is that? Love it. Make it. Go ahead, Dunkalicious. Let us know. You're the you're the guy with blood angels. All right. Uh, the final war suit will put his big guns into the other war suit, and then yep. uh, the small arms will go into the death company. Yep. He did not move, so he's sitting on twos, real and ones. The five uh, plus feel no pain. How much does that cost, Duncan? So four neg twos on the worst. Wow. Board. Yeah, should have done it. I definitely would have spent that and then transhuman. I'd have, I'd have spent three speed and made him choose through that. I would too. One hundred percent. Thank you. Like man, I spend Six four on when percent. I play with Lynch Guard every now and then to give them plus one to their save and then reflecting sixes back as mortal oh, wounds. So that's company. like how four CP. He That's is really something annoying. to consider, though. Nate, if uh, if Nate brought a Blood Angel Smash Captain, he can still wings it nine inches away and in 3d6 charge it. So that is a possibility if he can wear out some of these screens. He's not uh, dead in the water getting back to that gun line. And it's five. Well, and I, I think we do exactly what I said uh, before when we were over the top and we looked. Those Smash Captains go into the grav in that drop pod. Oh, that sucks. And there it is, coming back around. And then you go ahead and just headbutt the drop hey, pod, yeah. and then your next turn you you and kill it in his turn and come into him. Yeah, I think he just killed all of his uh, death company. Yep, there they go. I probably should. Uh, I know, they got the, you know, I don't know if it's completely bad. The, uh, the, 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 they probably soaked up quite a bit of fire, including the grab devs, who are not going to get to probably shoot again if Nate does that right. Start with this front uh, whirlwind. He's going to put it. So right now, the Scorpiuses are shooting. Uh, war suit. And targeting the Invictor right over here. They can do that work. Uh, string six versus string six. So we're on fours or T6. Shooting twice with an extra AP because of the doctrine and then they get extra damage too right Two's drilling once. i'm not sure the specific fist rules for that oh i was told that i'm being way too polite uh compared to how i normally am so <laughs> fucking face damn. you're always pulling polite to me Maybe that's, that's why. because i, I it's it's the dynamic it's the chameleon in me like you're like a wholesome kind of guy so i try to pretend that i know what that means and just do my best mr roger when i'm ever around you and then when i'm with bam i get to be a degenerate that makes sense i think he just called you a soft little bitch jason that's all right i got my tough side too there's no one there he does blow up i don't know man i don't know yep there goes another in victor Jason's the toughest judge at LVO, so that that lets you know that that pool of people. You know, I will give Jason some credit when he's judging. Um, he is uh, he's pretty hard on players as far as their conduct, so that's pretty cool. All right, so that front thunderfire. Well, uh, I mean, uh, I just don't six. want you guys to be an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> I'll go ahead Do you know? Did I ever tell you the story shot. about how Jason and I really uh, got to know each other? I'm gonna put all eight shots. No, but this sounds like a perfect story time since we're just watching Scorpius shoot twice and remove things. So you're down to so uh, Iron Halo 2015. Correct. Um, I'd taken a hiatus from 40k and six to this, 
and decided I was going to go to Iron Halo because I had a lot of things happen in my life, including uh, catching my girl cheating on me, uh, losing my job, my mom passing away. There was a whole litany of shenanigans that happened in my life. And I thought, I'm just going to go down there and play me some 40K mm -hmm. for the weekend and have a relaxing good time. Nope. So uh, I don't know if Jason's got anything to add up to this point, but I'll pause for that. Nope. So I was playing uh, this. I dude, like your version, uh, and then I'll correct it here in a second. Okay, so I, I'm old. Things holes get filled with uh, with fluff. So uh, I was playing these dudes. Your and, holes get dude. filled with more than fluff, sir. The two is needed. And uh, I was playing one guy, but his brother no, was table talking, and like both. Of, I was playing know. one game versus yeah, like two guys, yeah, and I had yeah, checked yeah. him on it a few times, asked him to stop asked them to stop so they continued right. to do it three up and then one of the guys started mocking me and uh when that dude started mocking me i lost my shit and threatened to murder him and this was not quiet it was not calm it was pretty loud and if his brother would have gotten her out of the way i was going to come around the table and murder him and about this time uh, brett perkins came around the corner and asked me to calm down and I told him to shut the fuck up or I'd kill him too. And uh, it was about that time that I realized I probably need to go take a walk around Bartlesville Scout. and collect Scout. my thoughts Scout. and peace. Scout, see. And so I did. I went and walked so, around Bartlesville. So all one square mile of it? <laughs> yep. I, hey, I, hey, I, hey, I, hey. You have to go across the tracks too. So I went and took my little walk and uh, I was finally calm and looked at the birds and the nice day outside and I start walking back through the venue and uh, there is Jason Horn at the door waiting for me and uh, I walked up to him and uh, I said I was out of control I uh, threatened to beat some dudes up and I said fuck a lot and I'm sorry and Jason was pretty gracious in his response guys I just wanted to make sure you guys were all okay yeah so they'll be neg one but I did not uh, get kicked out of the tournament. I lost my sportsmanship points. That's just and there. apparently that was not the Come first complaint anyway. about those guys team playing at the table. Oh, yeah, yeah. And so they got booted from the tournament. So I was not completely without just cause. Nope, that's accurate. So, it's fine. so Jason, what, what is left in this little pile to shoot right now? Because I see that we were, were losing a, either scout squad there or an invictor or an infiltrator squad. Right. So I am not a hundred percent sure. I've been following a little bit. Uh, I do know that he's firing his Scorpiuses now, and but not hundred percent sure if he's fired the uh, Thunderfire cannons. I think he was measuring characters a little bit ago from the Scorpiuses, so um, I'm not sure in the sequence what he has fired. He's probably trying to get at those Smash Cats. I mean, okay, so. Nate, I feel like, is losing a lot of stuff right now. I mean, he's lost uh, Death Company, two Invictors, and that's pretty much it. I think he has lots of uh, Scouts, um, Blood Angel Scouts, Infiltrators left. Uh, nothing really left, left to uh, clean up the board with. Alice, I I would not count those Smash Captains out. I think if Nate can get something garbage, to screen the Smash Captains so a little bit, three, he'll be okay. Uh, three, but we will see. He definitely has to get those Smash four, Captains four. into the back lines. Oh, yeah, 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 he has he has to hump that drop pod with them this next this next turn in order to then go into whatever whatever he can open up in his shooting phase. So, do you know what you're talking about? Is getting uh, this Smash Captain. This smash captain over, uh, moving right, so over to this wall, wall, right? Uh, uh, assaulting through, right? Assaulting through and then consolidating into the drop pod. All right, that middle world yeah. is going to go into the captain. And then you so use those, you go ahead and do your movement we'll and, in um, uh, Scott's uh, fighting phase. So do your pile-ins and consolidates to come around it. Kill or pile in, kill it, consolidate into that back corner. So then in his movement phase, he can just go ahead and get into those Invictor's war suits. See, so this is where I still think Scott's going to have a problem getting out 
because Seven. if he can do that, then that pile is still that pile in the corner, not trying to get, not able to get recon yet. Right. I think Scott is going for a uh, late game. I think watching this game is like watching paint dry. It is a little boring, but oh, we're going to have some really good stuff really happen later, nice. I think. I think next turn right, next is, is going to really determine if uh, Nate will be able to pull out the big W. Six. I think uh, when the only movement in the movement phase was a drop prod. Oh, oh, Captain so is gone. His second shots will go into... Yep. Yep. Assuming that that yep, this is, this is the bad part. <laughs> okay. Maybe it's going to be over in, in one hour, guys. 47. <laughs> yeah. He just targeted the other smash captain. Yep. So Scorpius is going in. This Scorpius right here is going to hit this smash captain. Let's go ahead and see them rolls. I bet you tell that to all the ladies. Yes. I like them big. Four, Thick five into seasons. the captain. Oops. Yep. Hey, it's all about survival instincts now there, Bam. You got to you gotta find those big girls so you can eat, eat them and move on. Still alive. Four, four damage, one damage. One, one wound left. Two, uh, two damage each. So then the thunder fire is obviously going to go to him. Yep. Ooh. Hey, hey, Horner. Easy there. Easy. At least that we moved. Jason brought me onto this game so I can I can be a responsible father here and have movie night with the kids since it's going to be over here when he loses that captain. <laughs> yeah. I mean, in all reality, and uh, I want you guys to be honest, does Nate have a chance after this captain goes? Did. Negative. Yep. That's that's the captain I'm right there. Yeah. I, yep, my that's, that's going to be it. Was not transhumaning the. Uh, I just uh, now it's going to be. Learn. This is my. Yeah. Th this I, is going to be th watching a cripple fight. Yeah. It's going to be game. two people think, just rolling dice with each other from across the board now. Into them. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I probably would, still would have killed him, but yeah, the, not probably both captains. Did he transhuman those death company, Jason? So apparently no, he did he not did transhuman not. or give one them fires, the so plus one uh, film of pain. I don't know. I'm, this, I'm, is, this is like a face plant right here. Yeah, that's it. All right, so I owe you leadership I'm still new to the show, Bam. So these are still your people. <laughs> uh, Nate comes from a team called Not in the Face for obvious reasons. And uh, A. Everett in the chat said more. shooting over Malie. Uh, this definitely is a shooting edition. I do think there are some Malie armies that will work, but you have to be pretty pretty slick about how you get it there. We got two big games and one for Butcher's Bill. Yep. So let's All take right. a look it at the score. Rough for me. All right, here we go. It's a million to five. Turn. No, actually, it's it. all tied up. Six to six. Yeah. Here's the thing, though. Nate's not going to be able to stop that recon coming up. Um, I can't see what else it is because it zoomed out too far. Sorry. So, I think it's just cleaning house for the next couple turns. Yeah, he's got plenty of time. That was a really good turn one, even without the Devastator Doctrine now. Basically, he's still gonna do yeah, quite a bit of damage. I can't, I, can't, I can't even walk toward you, so I'm just gonna sit here and. Yeah, those double firing things. Scorpius tanks it's are these ridiculous. These infiltrators. So now he can fan out. You know the. the uh, I guess uh, Scott's intercessors will probably take some fire from uh, Nate's intercessors, but now they're at negative one because we're no longer in uh, Devastator Doctrine. Yeah, uh, um, if you look, the uh, intercessors are on objective five or where those scouts, whatever they were, they're, they're gonna, uh, Scott can start fanning out and grabbing some of these objectives and then work towards the oh, whole yeah. the same. 
And then I'll hold more was. of the bonus for this turn is going to be to hold four objectives. And he's easily going to be able to clean them off. Uh, it's just a matter of getting more suits out and, and uh, other things out to sit on them now. You can just... Yeah, so he's basically just going to march everything up to get recon, right? Yeah, uh, it's going to be a turn or two for that, but it's fine. Um, you know, he can double recon if he does it right after this. But uh, getting on the objectives and starting to get that bonus is going to add up pretty quickly, being from two on. Yeah, I say I think this is where Nate Nate messed up. I think those that unit you know, he just moved should have moved in advance to go for three. Three should have just went ahead and moved in advance to go for six. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, I'll get the bonus this turn. And to be honest, he got greedy with those smash captains. I'd have left those smash Don't captains back in the might building. Be able to get a kill. And uh, I would have just held and held more and worked for my recon. Um, forcing Scott to come out of his castle because now that he's not in Devastator Doctrine. You can hit the he's not going to be as nasty. Oh yeah, yeah. And uh, you know if he could have just withered that storm of shooting and hang on to the Smash Captains, he could have winged them up at something uh, late game and start doing some wrecking. Well, it's like what we talked about initially. Like I was shocked that they weren't in Deep Strike. Yep. So I unload two. And I do think one of the traps, I can you know, the point the that uh, that's really all my uh, A Everett brought yeah. up. You know, one of the problems with uh, with close combat armies is guys play them too aggressively sometimes. You know, you can be aggressive, but you need to be the right kind of aggressive. And there's something to be said for using your screens and wait until that right moment is right to strike that a, a good close combat player can do. Yep, I agree. With my orcs, I would always typically deploy second and let my opponent opponent go first get closer and then uh attack with everything at once yeah and if the, you know thinking back to my game last night or talking about my game last night you know when i when i chose to go second you know the the shoutcasters kind of balked at that but with knowing that white scars were going to be up and in my grill turn one I knew it was going to be easier for me to get at the units I wanted to get at instead of me rolling all my power out there and letting him pick off whatever's the most or the biggest oh, threat to him. You, um, you just got to be patient. You know, don't don't run down there and screw on. Walk down there and screw them off. Yep. I think that's a, like a pro tip right there for 40K. Sometimes you guys just going to let a couple of units die and then uh, pounce on your prey. It's almost like a cat-like reflex. Kind of like well, the uh, Tiger know. King. <laughs> well, but you think about, you know, it is, uh, it, it is in the sense chess. You, uh, you know, you pawn out in the middle of the board and you put the pawn in the middle of the board because you expect it to be taken. And then uh, you do your counter move off of it. And, uh, you know, just sometimes just throwing that shit out there isn't the wisest or the smartest thing as far as setting up stuff. And, you know, I've been talking to Ben somewhat about my gameplay and a point he brought today was uh, thinking about late game. You know, instead of worried about getting this huge jump out turn one and turn two, start thinking about what your army's going to be doing turn five or turn six and and make a plan for that instead of thinking you have to win the game in one turn. All right, we're going. Uh, Although that alpha cool. strike sure is satisfying when you do you. it right. Yep. It is. Well, so it's one of those weird, like weird things. Like me, me as a Necron player, like you wouldn't expect me to move my Doomsday Arcs in certain situations. Okay. Like uh, now that I'm rocking the Deceiver, like I'll move them and not worry about so, tanks with high damage in order to take out get, uh, all the things that can hold objectives my, from my opponent's army. Uh, firing my small weapons. I'm not even gonna get my recon. So no recon. So I will get a much it's weird death. and when people see it see see that I do it they, they get completely thrown off by it and there's sure. things like that that you have to do in this game like so every now and then do something that's unexpected uh, that's in order so, to uh, try to get that advantage or get in your opponent's head a little bit cream the so yeah, I mean, like, like I think that's the problem with melee. Like with no, when you no, have yeah. something like so Death Company, you know they're going to forlorn fury, so, you know they're going to do this, I and we can max out your secondaries. Well. So you get you get into a, a setup where Nate needs to try to play a little cager with it. Yeah, yeah I think the thing too. I think they're actually talking to, talking it through already. I'll get one this turn and then you know, but think about that too. If everybody expects you to furlong fury, you know, everybody expects you to do a certain thing with Death Company. You know, maybe choosing to go second 
and leaving them off the board and bringing them in at the bottom it's of turn three by turn four is a smart thing to do. Because I think sometimes sure. going second is more powerful mm-hmm. because you can dictate the board or go after yeah, something for either a hold more or, or going and, and finding a way to nail the bonus because the board's already set for the turn. That's fair. And, you That's know, fair. maybe going second and taking those death right, company well, uh, yeah. and drop them down the bottom I mean, of turn three when you've done some damage or you've cleared out some screens, total you know, is part. definitely an easier way to do I that or, or use them than it. just like, throwing them out no, there to get killed. Because it's a pretty good point sink oh, yeah. for uh, something that's just born to die like that. Also I would agree with that. That's like uh, two or three hundred points for that death company just to take out, you know, a couple units. So. Um, I'm going to go talk to the players real quick. Make sure that they are going to call the game and then have them kind of talk through real quick. Do some damage with them. I can still do some damage with them. Copy. Um, but you just outgun me for sure. So. Hey, so guys, it sounds like yeah. you're about to call the game. Is that accurate? Yep. All right, cool. Yep. Uh, hour and 18 minutes. Hey, that's awesome, man. <laughs> With our new chess clock rules. Love it. So real quick, uh, let me talk to uh, Scott r- real quick, and then I'll talk to you, Nate. But Scott, you castled right. up in the corner, and uh, I actually said that uh, I didn't really like your deployment because it was so boxed in, and I saw the death company approaching, and I saw the two smash captains. Um, Have you why, played against why, Blood Angels, though? I've played Blood Angels before, so I, I kind of know what they can do, but... Um, I felt like it was just too constrictive. Obviously, you proved proved me wrong because uh, you were totally able to, to uh, weather the storm. But do you are you going to use this type of deployment for all? Like, if you play orcs, would you use this type of deployment going second as well? One hundred percent. As as long as I can get a long deployment, I can be okay because I can screen out. I won't ever get a lot a lot of points. Like thirty four is pretty high, and that's only because I would have tabled him turn three. But right. it, it's it's just the, this list is kind of poop, but it is one list where I have several layers of blocking out. And as long as I have my Scorpius and my Thunderfires firing, I'm going to do, do OK. So so, so could you, you know, as long as, if I have if I have all three of the war suits shooting, too, it's, it's a really good thing. So who are your MVPs typically in a list like this? So Scott, who are your MVPs in a list like this? 100% the Scorpius. There's no doubt about that. It's the multiple damage and and double shooting each turn. And then also neg three turn one, so you pretty much can wipe out any screening that's that's there. Yeah, no, no, no joke, no joke. Well, this is pretty exciting. I'm I'm exciting. You're moving to the next round, and uh, that's that's pretty awesome. So Nate. Nate, the uh, ebook Martin. Yep. So yeah, I mean, my what my happened, only, man? Well, so the list, the way I built this list, um, it obviously has a ton of board control, as you saw by my deployment. Um, it screens out really, really well because of all the the twenty four or uh, twenty infiltrators, but I, I basically have one big hammer and then. Uh, you know, some kind of extra cleanup. The, the war suits are clean up and the Smash Bros are clean up. My issue, my big mistake was I did not transhuman on the on the uh, Death Company. And really, the only reason this is my third game, uh, so I've only played actually one tabletop game with Death Company, and then um, I played one simulator game with uh, my my bro uh, from another Mo Duncan uh, last night just to get used to tabletop simulator. And, um, so it's just, it's just a lack of knowledge. So it's, uh, but Scott and I were kind of talking, even if I had transhumaned the death company, his volume of fire, he just would have put more firepower in them. Now that would mean that my, it probably would have meant that my two smash captains would have stayed alive an extra turn and they can get in and do some damage. But I mean, my, my war suits were just going to die quickly anyway against Imperial fists. There's not much I can do about that. So I knew I had to put them up front, um, try to do as much as they could. He's got the impulser there. Um, and I don't know if it, people saw on the stream, but I on my screen, I couldn't see that there were two craters right there. I don't know if it really would have made a difference as far as my, my deployment necessarily, but 
Um, so that's what uh, the TO uh, was having to adjust um, during the game. But anyway, I, honestly, there, there wasn't much different in my gameplay other than that that one um, thing, which could have been fair. I, I still think Scott pulls it out because of the, the volume of fire is just huge with that list. And since I'm relying on kind of some squishy, yeah, relatively good screens to get like bonus early turn, things like that, screen everything out. He's, a, he's just a giant castle in the corner. I mean, um, and I've got to, I've got to get stuff in there, uh, which is why after I killed the impulsor, I, you know, tried to tie up um, what I could, but he still has room to move out of, out of there. You know, if he didn't have room to move out, um, then maybe I'm in good shape, but the death company can only do that. Um, they're one, they're a one trick pony and, uh, they've got to do maximum damage on that first turn. So, um, but it was a good game. Good learning experience for me, for sure. Now, aside from the, uh, transhuman, what about, um, are there any other things that you would, uh, you would have done differently? Um, I mean, I don't have a ton of experience with the list. I, I don't think so. The transhuman is, you know, definitely, um, was probably the biggest linchpin for me, the biggest mistake that I made, but um, not really. I mean, going first, uh, you know, with the, with my list, I want to go first, so I don't get to see what where his stuff's going to be. Um, so it's a it's a trade off, right? I'm going to go first to get my forlorn fury off and get those death company in charging first turn, which you know Scott knew was coming. So, um, but he's the just like uh, he said, you know, he's built it to have his screens in front and then his meat and potatoes in the back corner do all the do all the heavy lifting so um i don't really feel like there's much i would do different i i made sure i tried to get the bonus early um and then just try to let my hammers do the work the problem is the way i built this list it's not all of one thing so i'm kind of unfortunately i'm kind of trying to do two separate things with the co close combat and then having like a backline shooty which in some regard i think doesn't totally complement one another because the hammer is doing one thing, trying to get things into combat. And then you've got, you know, the shooting in the background, trying to do a, a totally separate thing. Whereas Scott's list is doing one thing. So I think that I, I, as far as different, I really think list composition might be where I need to, to put my head. Yep. I can totally understand that. Well, thanks guys for joining us today. Wes and, uh, Wes, the TO you're amazing, man. Say a few words about the Branson open while you have a chance. Thanks, uh, provided that the uh, coronavirus stuff ends prior to June. Uh, down in Branson, Missouri, we're going to be running uh, for the first time the Branson Brawl, uh, June 13 and 14. So uh, it'll be summertime. I think school's already out for the majority of people, but opportunity to go to a big, uh, big tournament. And you can actually bring your family along this time, and they'll have stuff to do. So opportunity there. Uh, beyond that, we've got uh, all the ITC Frontline Gaming terrain tables. We bought 35 of those. We have all of them built and most of them painted. And we got a nice venue. So uh, if you guys can make it out, if we're available, that'd be great. If you have any questions, uh, hit me up. Yep. What Where they can they, can they find you? Uh, the dates are June 13 and 14. Um my name's Wesley Anderson. Uh, if you just Facebook, uh, head on Facebook and go to uh, Ransom Brawl GT, it should pop up on there. Uh, if not, get a hold of your local TO and they should be able to get a hold of me. Yep. Also, uh, check the Lord Marshall page. It's uh, one of the events listed under the more Lord Marshall Facebook page as well as our website. Correct. Cool. Well, hey, thanks you guys for playing the game. We appreciate it. I'm... Brian, Dino, final thoughts on the game. What could have been? Thanks, Nate. It was a good game, man. Yeah, yeah good game. Appreciate it, bro. Uh, I'll let Bam go first on this one. Yeah, dude. I'm, I'm a happy. I'm, I'm signed up to go to Buggy, dude. Um, I'm hoping it happens. You're, you're always letting me go first. That's awfully uh, polite of you. I, uh, you know, I don't know. Like I said, well, I already gave him points. I do think if you go first, you definitely furlong fury. 
I think, uh, you know, the Nate messed up. He kept talking about transhuman. He also forgot about his feel no pain. Um, you know, a, a transhuman with a five up feel no pain and auto passing morale on those death companies saves his smash captains. So that could have changed the game. It still would have been an uphill struggle, but it would have made it uh, within uh, at least something attainable. Um, you know, this might have been an instance where if I were in this, this situation, I deep strike stuff like Dino says, I deploy back and uh, I wither that Devastator Doctor in turn one, hopefully taking advantage of cover. And then I come at him turn two and turn three when he no longer has a Devastator Doctor on his side. So I think the only problem with with that is it's in fist, so they give zero shits about your cover. Um, maybe you go with it instead of the Forlorn Fury and just throwing them out there, you go ahead and go on the outside of that building. Um, that way the only thing that has line of sight is the artillery pieces, and you play everything that we talked about that he should have played, see what survives, and then next turn you bring the re remnants of a full Death Company squad in with two smash captains deep striking into that castle that he had set up well here's the thing you know those scorpius um you can deploy in that back corner and corner to corner um the way scott deployed you know he's not going to basically get at your shit with 48 inches but yeah. that's my take yep. so, it, va valid so like i said if i were to deploy you know, I would deploy something important back to where he'd be tempted to move the uh, the Scorpiuses up to get at it and then uh, see what happens and make my move turn two or turn three. Could you guys consider maybe uh, putting the Death Company and the Smash Captains in reserve? I would have left one Smash Captain on the board because you have plenty of screens and I would have probably deep struck the Death Company and another smash captain later in the game whenever your thunderfires have gotten to do some work yeah and that in that situation you take bam's plan and you put all your stuff back that we has to move the scorpiuses in his first turn in order to be able to have range on the stuff that um he needs to fire at in order to try to get more open space when you come in yep so who, who we got up next for tomorrow? Well, we got two games tomorrow. You can see on the screen right now we have our bracket. Obviously, uh, Scott is going to move on to face Ben Cherwin. Ben Cool Ranch Cherwin. So that's going to be an awesome game. That'll be uh, next week. But tomorrow we are going to have uh, Dan Sammons and Josh Thompson. Chaos versus Orcs. So woo! Uh, and then on Saturday, again, Saturday at 7, uh, we're going to have Mr. Archon Scar himself with his Drukari list versus Marcus Guerrera and Sisters. So that's going to be awesome. Awesome matchup. Jason, are you allowing the new orcs yes. in play? However, I don't think Josh brought that. I think that's actually a vehicle spam. Is it all buggies? No, it's not all buggies. I think there are uh, maybe some battle wagons in there. Uh, it's very, it's more of one of the fluffier lists in this supposed exhibition match. Uh, so uh, it's gonna yeah, be, I it's gonna be fun. Gonna be, the the next time we uh, call something some exhibition, there should be some list review beforehand. No, I agree one hundred percent. There was no list review, but uh, yeah. I'm just not gonna call an exhibition next time. Y'all brought some hammers. <laughs> we really did. I thought we were going to see like 300 crew, uh, 300 orcs, 300 grots, something you, crazy. You, you wanted me to play in this with my Necrons. I would have been the fluffiest thing out here. <laughs> we just had, I was just trying to show how awesome Texas was. That's all. Oh, then you should have gone elsewhere. Not this guy. <laughs> well, you guys, uh, 
You can check all the uh, information on the brackets, the schedule at uh, lordmarshall.org. Click on Quarantine Hammer in the center of the board, and that'll get you information about the players, uh, their stats as far as the Lord Marshall Conference, and uh, the bracket. And if you are interested in filling out an Elite Eight bracket, uh, shoot a message to the Facebook page. Uh, at Lord Marshall or email me Lord, or contact at lordmarshall.org and uh, we'll get you set up with a bracket. Uh, we'll be finishing up the sweet, sweet 16 round this Sunday at 2 o'clock. So we have two games tomorrow and one game on Sunday. And then next week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday will be the Elite 8. Thursday, Friday, or excuse me, uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday is the Elite 8. Final four is Friday, Saturday, and the championship round will be on Sunday. So stay tuned. Uh, thanks, you guys, for watching. And uh, do you guys want to say anything uh, before we leave? Go check out the Flying Monkeys War Game. It's awesome. Uh, just some real 40K in. Uh, show up at Flying Monkey Con. It will be a major... Uh, just get your hobby done. Be safe. Uh, enjoy, if you have it, the extra free time you have to get some models painted. Um, thanks for inviting me out. It was fun. No problem. Thanks, you guys, for having me out. Be sure to follow the channel, and we'll see you guys tomorrow. From all of us here thing? at Lord Marshall TV, dice safely. Thanks for having me on, Jason. Yep.